Hi everybody, today I've got a really easy tutorial showing you how to make personalised bunting. If you're a beginner sewer, this one's perfect for you, it comes together really quickly. Right, so let's take a look at what we need for this project. I've got two lots of templates, there's the template for the bunting and the template for the letters, both of which you can download from my website, and I've got the fabric for making the bunting. From the left to the right you'll see the two blue fabrics which are going to be used to make the flags. The middle fabric, which is the sort of cream colour, is the calico which I'll be using to back it. Calico is much cheaper and it's also a stiffer fabric so it's quite good for using for backing because it gives it a little bit of strength to the bunting but also saves you a bit of money. And the red is for the letters. We've also got two pairs of scissors, one for fabric, one for paper, some pins, some bunting tape, a pen, a pencil and some heat and bond. So the first thing you need to do is to cut out your bunting flags. I'm going to need eight bunting flags and so I'm going to cut out eight triangles from my calico which I'm using as backing. I've got my bunting flag template. You can either use a dedicated fabric pen to draw around your template or I'm just going to use a biro because I know that when I do the seams the marks that I made with the biro are going to be hidden anyway so it's just an easier option. It doesn't have to be incredibly precise but you do want to make sure that you make best use of the fabric and get as many triangles as you possibly can out of the fabric. So when you've done one flip it round and draw another one next to it. So I've now got a total of 16 flags, 8 of the calico ones which I'll be using for the back, 4 of the solid blue and 4 of the blue check which together will form the front bunting flags. Now in order to make your letters what you need to do is take your heat and bond and place it with the bumpy side facing down over the letters and obviously you need to use the templates that I've provided on my blog which have the letters facing backwards. Then you trace around them uh, making sure if you're doing something like the letter B as I am here that you also manage to do the inside of the letter as well because you'll be cutting that out for the final piece. So now I've traced all the letters that I need to cut out to make the lettering for my bunting and uh, obviously you can do them in any order and try and do them as closely together as possible so you can conserve your use of the heat and bond and I'm going to cut these out now with my paper scissors. So now I've cut out my letters from the heat and bond and I've placed them with the bumpy side down on the felt fabric which I'm going to be using for the lettering on the bunting and all I'm going to do now is press those with the iron so that the bumpy side will adhere to the felt fabric and then I'll be able to cut them out. So what I've got now is all the letters which I ironed onto my um, felt and cut out of the felt and you can see on the back is the original heat and bond. So what I need to do now is take these letters, peel off the heat and bond off the back like this and you will see that it leaves behind a slightly shiny surface and that is your adhesive and then you can take these back to the ironing board and iron over the top and that will then stick those letters onto your front flags. So now you've ironed your letters with the um, sticky side down onto the top layer of your bunting, the next thing you need to do is to stitch them on just to give them an extra bit of strength. If you use the Heat and Bond Ultra which is the strong sticky stuff you can get away without stitching it but I like finishing it off properly. So here's one that I've already done that's got the straight stitching all the way around the edge and just to reinforce we're only doing at this stage the top part of the bunting so I haven't sewn on the, the back of the bunting yet. I've just done the top part. So what I've got now is a stack of the front bunting flags with my letters sewn onto them with a straight stitch and I've got the back bunting flags so I need to take my front flags, turn them over so that the letter is facing down and place them onto the back flag and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch in all the way along here down to the bottom and back up to the top and I'm going to leave this bit here open so that I can turn them inside out and when I attach my bunting tape that will seal that hem there. 
So now I have sewn together the bunting flags, so the top with the letter attached to it is now attached to the back part of the flag. All you need to do now is take the scissors and just chop off this point here, making sure you don't catch the stitching which you've done. And then you can turn the flag inside out so you can see the lettering. And you might need a little pencil to push in here to straighten it out. But what you'll see is your neat little flag will begin to emerge and uh, as I say push something in there to get the point to come out and press it with an iron and you've got your first bunting flag. One final thing to do with these bunting flags before you attach them to the bunting tape is you see at the corners that you've got a little bit of folded over fabric cut that off to give you a straight run at the top so just snip those off and then you can see now that the top is straight. Now is take your finished bunting flags and lay them out on the floor so that you can work out how much of the bunting tape you're going to need. So I've laid these out now and I've left a tail of about 20 inches or 50 centimeters at either end. Measured my bunting tape and worked out how much of a length I need and the next thing to do is press it in half. Now I'm using inch wide bunting tape, you can use any width that you want. Uh, the wider you use, the easier it is to attach it because obviously it's not quite so fiddly once you've folded it in half. Fold it across the width, take the iron and press that and then we work all the way along the length of the bunting tape. So the final stage before you do your sewing is to attach the bunting tape to the flags and obviously you folded it in half so what you need to do is um, when you attach it you're actually opening up that fold there and putting the flag into it and then pin it. I've used three pins on each flag which is about right and then you're ready to sew it along with a straight stitch and the idea with the straight stitch is really you want to be as close to the bottom of the tape as possible when you do that. When you've done that, you're finished.